Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Did you know that I have conducted about 75 interviews on this channel to date? I have learned so much from these interviews and I hope that you have too. And if you're new to this channel and you're thinking, there is no way I can watch 75 interviews. This video is for you. Or if you're thinking, I watched a lot of those interviews, but I've forgotten a lot of it. This video is also for you because in this video, I'm going to do my best to summarize the main takeaways and key points from all of those interviews. Specifically in this video, I'm gonna cover four things. First, I'm gonna share my observations and my opinions about the overall trends of MECFS recovery over the last couple of years and related conditions. Second, I'm gonna share how people who fully recover approach their recovery. Third, I'm gonna share what professionals and programs people are finding the most helpful with their MECFS recovery and similar conditions. And then fourth, I'm gonna share the specific strategies that are most often shared with me from people who do fully recover. And I realize that sometimes my opinions won't be popular and I'm okay with that. So today I'm gonna to work as hard as I can to just say it like it is. And remember, nothing shared in this video or on this channel should be considered professional advice. Cue the on-screen disclaimer. This is for information purposes only. All right, so first, my observations about MECFS recovery over the last couple of years. It feels like things have been changing rapidly and it is a dramatically different scene today than it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago which is a great thing. One of my observations, and I think the most important one, is that I believe recovery is possible for everybody. Now I know this isn't what everybody thinks, but I truly believe this. After all the people I've talked to, not just from these interviews, but from the hundreds of messages that I get from people all over the world, people are fully recovering after any duration of illness at every age, from every level of severity, from all different sorts of illness onsets and triggers and special circumstances and so forth. It just really seems like even some of these cases where you think there's just no way this person is coming back from this and then they fully do. So if you're currently in this and it feels like you just might never get past this, I don't believe that that's true. I think, I think that you should keep looking even if you've tried 50 things that didn't work, that 51st might be the one that does, or the final piece of that puzzle that pulls everything together for you. Another observation, I think we've all noticed this to some extent, is that this horrific pandemic that we've been going through has had a silver lining, and it's that us in the MECFS community have more visibility, our condition has more awareness, and there is a ton more research that is happening as a result, which is one more reason to be all the more hopeful if you're currently facing a condition like MECFS. And I'll link on the screen here if you wanna check out somewhere, I always forget which side, a video of some MECFS research that I am personally championing and helping to raise money for. Another observation, I think, ME and CFS are the same thing. I think a lot of us think this. I think whether you receive a diagnosis of ME or CFS depends way more on where you live or what doctor you see than it does on what's happening in your body. And if you noticed, the only people that I can tell that are piping up about this and have an issue with it are the people with an ME diagnosis because they don't want to be lumped in with the CFS people. Chronic fatigue syndrome, as we all know, is the worst name ever. So you can hardly blame them for not wanting to be lumped into that. But I have yet, in all my complaints about my using the term ME-CFS, have one person say, I have CFS and I don't wanna be lumped in with those ME folks. So I really think we should all just be friends, accept that we're all in the same boat together, stop this diagnosis gatekeeping because we are going to have far more success if we put our energy into working together to find our way out of this than we will from worrying about the various labels that this condition is given. And for some people, even long COVID might also be ME-CFS, not everybody but it seems like, I think we're all noticing, there's a big group of these folks that are falling into this category as well. Another observation is that many people think of ME-CFS as a woman's disease that virtually no men get it. But on my channel, about 25% of the interviews that I have done have been with men. Now, is this representative of the greater population at large? I have no idea, but at the very least, it seems noteworthy. Another thing that I've noticed is that supplements and prescription medications on a whole as a recovery strategy seem to be mostly useless. Some people find success with them in some small ways with symptom management, but relying on supplements or prescription medications to fully recover does not seem to be getting anybody anywhere. And my last observation over the last couple of years is that brain training programs are sweeping our recovery world. They are everywhere. There is so much talk about them and 
this is something that I did not hear about 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So it's really interesting to see this shift in the recovery approach that people are taking. All right, second, how do people who fully recover approach their recovery? Here I'm talking about themes, with recovery mindsets. Now, why do we care about mindsets? The reason we care is because the first theme with this is that people who fully recover care about their mindset. All right, so what does that look like? What exactly does that mean? Well, in my experience, in my observations of people who fully recover, a recovery mindset includes a few key things. First off, and I think most importantly, is it includes a belief in recovery. People who fully recover believed 100% that recovery was possible. They might've had moments and bad days where they got really down and hopeless and lost some of that belief, but overall in their core, when they pulled themselves back up, they believed fully that they were gonna get there. And I really think that if you are in that space right now, you know, if you're that person that's in every chat group and Facebook group talking about how recovery isn't possible and the people who fully recovered were never really sick or they had something different or they're lying, I don't think that recovery is in the cards for you. I do not see how you can get there when you believe at your core that it's not possible. But the good thing about mindset though, is if you are in this place and it's understandable, it really is if you've got there, cause this is a hellish condition and it beats you down. And with so many people not recovering, I can see how people could really start to think that way, but you can change your mindset. It's not set. Our recovery mindset also includes acceptance of your current limitations. Not acceptance that you're gonna have these limitations forever, but acceptance that this is where you are right now. I really think this is vital and virtually every person I talked to had to come to a place where they got out of that boom bust cycle because without that acceptance, if you're pretending that it's not as bad as it is, you're gonna keep pushing yourself too hard and that two steps forward, eight steps back, path is not one that leads you out of this. A recovery mindset also includes making your recovery an absolute priority. It means dispensing with the excuses, getting creative with your life, figuring out what can go, what is not important, where you can get help, where you can scale back, and how you can channel the vast majority of your usable energy into the things that are gonna get you well. Now, I fully get that there is a range of responsibilities that people have out there that are real, and some of them really aren't going anywhere. And I know that this isn't fair or evenly distributed across people. Some people are very fortunate that they can scale back virtually everything and put all their focus into recovery and other people just don't have that luxury. But think about if you had a cancer diagnosis right now, would you still be saying the same things? Would you still be saying, I have to do this. There's no way I can scale back on that. I can't ask for help. I can't stop doing that. I can't step away from that. If you had cancer and you need to do the treatment for that, something tells me that you would find a way to make yourself a priority and to save yourself. ME-CFS is an incredibly debilitating condition and I just hope that people aren't letting things like the crappy title that it has or the lack of awareness or understanding in society and the medical community keep you from giving your recovery the importance and the priority that it deserves. And the good news is, is that this isn't a willpower thing. This isn't a matter of just waking up in the morning and snapping your fingers and all your responsibilities magically disappear. And now you just decide to focus on your health. There are tools, there are strategies, there are hacks, there is help available that you might not know about. And I feel so passionately about this that I created a course all specifically on this. I have a Skillshare course called Lifestyle Pacing, Tools for Optimizing Your Energy and Achieving Your Goals. And I'll put a link in the video description if you want to join. You can join for 30 days completely for free. And there are hundreds of people who have already taken this course. And it's so nice to see that the reviews are really incredible. It is just the most amazing thing to know that this toolkit that I worked so hard to put together, people are finding helpful and it's actually helping them on their recovery. For most people, navigating their chronic illness recovery will be one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing that they ever do in their life. So I think it's really important to get that support and get those skills and do whatever you can so that you can make this a priority and be on track and make sure that your focus is where it needs to be so you can get past this. And lastly, a healing mindset includes a ton of compassion for yourself, a ton of 
kindness for yourself. So many people I talk to, and this was my experience as well, is that we're just really hard on ourselves. And guaranteed, you are gonna make mistakes. You are going to not stick to your recovery program, even though you might really believe in its potential to help you because you're human. And even though you're probably likely some type A overachiever who thinks that you're some kind of superhuman, you're really just a regular old human. And what you are facing is incredibly challenging and nobody gets it all right. There's nobody out there who doesn't struggle. There's nobody out there who doesn't lose hope sometimes. There's nobody out there who doesn't find it incredibly difficult to have to keep picking themselves back up over and over and over again. And in this process, please, please be kind to yourself. Give yourself some slack, give yourself some encouragement. And remember, remember who you are. This illness can strip away our identity. You are a badass and you have totally got this. All right, third, what programs and professionals are helping people the most? Now, my general opinion on this is that there is no one program or professional out there that can heal everybody. And if someone is claiming that they can, they are not to be trusted. So as we look at this more closely, let's start with conventional medicine. So what about your family doctor? What about the whole conventional medicine system? Are they going to heal you from your ME-CFS or similar condition? My short answer is no. Of everyone that I've talked to, only one person recovered in a conventional medicine setting and this person did so through a doctor who was originally from India and who was using traditional Indian medicine to help this person. So really, it wasn't conventional Western medicine at all. I'm not saying we dispense with conventional medicine altogether. Absolutely not. I think they absolutely have a place and they have value and they can offer insights to things that are vital on our journey. What I am saying or what I am suggesting what I'm inviting you to do is to be open-minded about other healing modalities out there to supplement whatever it is that you're getting from your medical doctors. All right, now what about health coaches? There are so many health coaches out there now. When I first got sick, I had never even heard of a health coach. If they existed, I have no idea where they were. And when they first started appearing, coaches in general, I was quite skeptical. I thought, how is this rando gonna help me with whatever it is they're claiming to help me with? How do I know I can trust them? How do I know they have any idea what they're talking about? But I think as time goes on, we're all starting to realize the value that coaches of all sorts can have and health coaches absolutely are helping people to recover. I have people messaging me all of the time telling me how much health coaches have helped them on their journey. Most health recovery coaches that are working with people with ME-CFS and similar conditions are people who have gone through it themselves. So this is really a boot camp for us, as I'm sure I don't have to tell you. It is such a learning journey. We, many of us read hundreds of books, spend tens of thousands of dollars, see countless specialists, try every program out there. And then we come through this and you really feel like you have gained a level of expertise and knowledge on this topic that has value and that can help other people. And people come through this experience passionate about helping other people who are still stuck there because they get it. They know what it's like and they have tools that can potentially help you get past it as well. Now, I know it can be overwhelming because there are a ton of health coaches out there. Where does one even find a health coach and where do you even start? Well, my friend Liz Carlson has put together an amazing website full of resources and part of that is a page with a list of health coaches that she recommends. So I'll link that in the video description if you wanna check it out. You're gonna have to take a look and see who seems like a good fit for you. And I'm sure all of them have something to offer. One that I can personally recommend because I know her the best and I've had the most people reach out to me who have worked with her as clients and had success is Pamela Rose. She is just an incredible human being who has herself come through this illness successfully. She's on that list I just mentioned, but I'll put her website in the video description as well uh, if you'd like to check it out. Now, something else that we have available now that we didn't years ago is that there are, as I'm sure you've noticed, a lot of ME-CFS and similar conditions, uh, recovery programs that are popping up all over the place. And people are just not sure what to make of it. Can they be trusted? Do they work? Now, of all the people that I've talked to and interviewed, there is no one program where everyone that I've talked to has had success with it. But there are programs where a lot of people have had success with it. And people will sometimes ask me which program I think is the best. And I would be lying if I said that I knew. It's just really too hard from the outside 
to tell, but there are programs that I see a lot of people having success with. I have had a lot of people reach out to me and I've interviewed a lot of people who have had great success with brain training programs. And again, people ask me which one is the best. Again, I don't know because I've talked to people who have had success with all of them. Again, not everyone has success with these programs, but a lot of people are. I've also had a lot of people tell me that they've had success with the Optimum Health Clinic, which is run by Alex Howard, and the ANS Rewire program, which is run by Dan Neufer. Now, I've had both of these people on my channel and interviewed them, so that's probably going to result in more people reaching out to me to share their recovery stories. But that being said, there are still a lot of recovery stories coming out of these programs, so they definitely from what I can tell, seem to have a lot of value. And if you're not familiar with them and you wanna learn more, I'll link their websites in the video description as well. There are a lot of recovery programs out there and I can't cover them all in this video. And it would be pointless to even try because I can't say with any certainty which one is gonna work for you. Another thing that I've noticed with people is that listening to your gut, trusting your intuition, and going with the one that resonates for you can really go a long way. So unfortunately, I don't think anyone out there can tell you which recovery program is gonna be the best one for you. One thing you can do is join groups like, I have a Facebook group that has almost 5,000 people in it, and you can throw the question out there and say, hey, who's tried this program? Have you had success with it? Who hasn't had success with it? And the great thing about this Facebook group is that it is optimistic and recovery focused. So it is not a space for you know, venting and gaslighting and negativity and all of that. It really is just a solution focused, recovery focused space to get support and to get answers. I'll link that one in the video description as well if you're interested in checking it out. All right, fourth, what are the specific recovery strategies that people use who fully recover? So with this one, I've noticed some overall themes of general things that people do and then some specifics that people do that they're finding really helpful. Now, the first thing is that the basics seem to always help. And the basics, if you are recently unwell, or even if you've been unwell for a long time and you've yet to address these things, is a really good place to start. Virtually everyone I've talked to has found that looking at things like cleaning up their diet, getting some sunshine if that's possible, getting a little bit of movement into your life if that's possible, drinking lots of water, working on your mental health, starting to meditate, making sure you have support and connection in your life. These things go so much further than I think virtually any of us gave them credit for before we became unwell. Managing stress is also something that goes a long way for a lot of people. Something I didn't appreciate for many years, how you know, our nervous system is really important. And if our body isn't in a state where it can heal, if we've got that fight or flight mode constantly engaged, it's really challenging for all these good things that we're doing for our body to really have any kind of impact. Also, as I mentioned earlier, people who I talk to who incorporate some aspect of addressing the neurological aspect of their illness seem to have a greater success rate with their recovery. So this is all those brain training programs out there. I'm not saying that they're for everybody. And I know there are many people who have tried them and it didn't work for them. I get that and I appreciate that. But I think many people are too quick to dismiss them. If I'm gonna put up a video where I'm gonna get pushback and even meanness from people on the internet, it's gonna be a video about brain training. People like to lash out at these and I think because sometimes it seems too simple and sometimes it happens too fast and something about that invalidates this whole condition for us, makes it feel like it's all in our heads or it never really was that bad and it's scary to think that we've been suffering with something for 30 years that could have maybe been fixed in a couple of months of brain training. But it's undeniable how many people are having success with it so I think it's at least worth being open-minded about and in considering as a part of your journey. Diet's another interesting one. I used a plant-based diet with my recovery. It was super helpful. I was very passionate about it. I wrote about it in my book. I'm like, yes, this is the diet. This is so amazing. It's got such healing potential. I really thought that if I had such great success with it that virtually everybody else would as well. But I've come to realize that diet helps a lot of people, but what that looks like varies wildly from vegan to carnivore, paleo, anti-inflammatory, all sorts of things. So yes, I think it's worth putting time into diet, but again, anyone out there who's telling you, you must eat meat to recover, or you must eat a vegan diet to recover. Again, it's a red flag. 
not for them not to be trusted because <laughs> because nobody knows and there's just too many examples of people who are thriving with such a wide variety of diets there's a lot of factors to consider so it's going to take some experimentation and just listening to your body and paying attention to what works for you another thing that a lot of the people that i talk to tell me who fully recover from these conditions is that incorporating some element of whether we call it pacing or uh, there are a lot of different names for it and what one person calls pacing isn't what another person calls pacing i think at the end of the day it's just that recognizing your current limitations working within that and only pushing them up slightly you're making sure that you're not having these wild boom and bust cycles and then making that space for recovery in your life which can only happen when you have a system for managing your energy when you have tools for you to even know how much usable energy you have in a day because many people don't even know and again there are a lot of strategies and hacks for how to accomplish this in my skillshare course lifestyle pacing that you can do completely for free so i hope you'll come join us there now if you're watching this right now i get that people want the nitty-gritty specifics of this like tell me step by step the people who are recovering what are most of them doing and this is a challenging one to share because although there are themes in the big stuff you know the mindset and the approach and the lifestyle and the pacing and the prioritization and the stress and so forth those specific things in addition to that that people credit their recovery to vary wildly i'll share some of them here but they are all over the map it includes things like combo the frog poisoning treatment that some people get all sorts of diets, like I mentioned. It comes from, for some people, healing past trauma or dealing with current aspects of their life. Perhaps their relationships or their career or the place they live isn't in line with the life they truly want to be living. And changing these things can help them have great improvements in their health. People have had full recovery from things like energy medicine. People have had full recovery from graded exercise therapy. I know this is controversial, but it was an aspect of my recovery. It was hugely helpful for me. I'm not saying it's for everybody, but it is for some people. Ayurveda, traditional Indian medicine, is working great for some people. Focusing on gut health and healing your gut microbiome can go a long way. Some people it's addressing mold toxicity in their body. Some people it's addressing mineral deficiencies that they've identified through hair analysis that they found really got them to that full 100% recovery place. For some people it's the medical medium. It, it really is all over the place. There is no one thing that everyone's sharing like, yes, for all of us it was mold. It, uh, yeah, it can be a lot of different things. So my final message for you, if you are currently facing a health condition like ME-CFS, first of all, my heart goes out to you. I know what a trying journey this is, and I know this can all be really overwhelming. And I would just encourage you to listen to your gut and go with the things and the paths and the people that resonate for you, the things that make sense for you. And to stay open-minded, you might not like the recovery paths that some people are taking, but I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you are shutting out certain things just because they're not in line with what you were raised to believe about healing or it shakes kind of the foundation of what you understand to be what's going on with your condition. The reality is, is that if you want new results, you're gonna have to try new things. I would also encourage you to guard your space fiercely. Keep all that negative crap out, whether it's coming from social media or medical journals or online chat rooms. If it is not lighting you up, if it is not fueling your recovery and inspiring you and giving you the support and the insights that you need to keep going, get rid of it and be very persistent in your ways of mustering up hope. Hope is so important. Hope is what will get you to keep picking yourself up and getting up day after day after day and doing all the things you need to do to recover. So find hope, whether it's through recovery stories or people in your life or quotes and sayings that you plaster all around your world. Just make sure you find ways to keep that hope going so that you can keep going. And remember my favorite word, your trajectory is everything. Sometimes it feels like you're not getting anywhere like you've been stuck forever. Take a step back every once in a while and see how much further along you actually are, how much you've learned, how much more knowledgeable you are. All those things you've tried that didn't work, that put you ahead. Now you know what not to waste any more time or money on. And when you step back, you'll see you actually are making progress. And on any given day, it might not feel like we're getting anywhere, but if you see you're slowly making it upwards, 
in time it's gonna take you where you're trying to go. So hang in there. I believe recovery is possible for everybody, including you. You have totally got this. Keep going, keep working at it, keep searching until you find your answers. And you will come out of this a stronger, happier, more confident, more healthy person than you have ever been in your life. Keep at this and do not forget, you are a badass and you have totally got this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.